Welcome to another video, Marunas here, and today I'm going to talk to you about two very interesting topics. One of them is how much money does it take to create a $10,000 or $20,000 sandwich bot and how to interact with the Ethereum virtual machine and how to use it to, you know, create the best performing sandwich or MEV bots possible out there. So the first question is how much money does it take to create a sandwich bot or an arbitrage bot or, or any MEV bot that makes me at least $20,000 or $20,000 in profit every single month. Those bots are out there, They're, they exist. And in order for you to create something like that or to buy it from someone else like me, you need to spend at least two years of the profit that that bot would make upfront. So this is no different than any Serve software as a service a subscription you pay upfront one or two years from what this program can make you let's say you're buying a business that's making ten thousand dollars a month you will have to pay at least twenty four thousand dollars because that will be two years in profits upfront and then you can use it for as long as you want of course but that's in a very that's in case the person wants to sell it or create it for you. And to be honest, I don't feel like selling a business that is making so much money. Right now, let me be honest, I don't have a subscription bot, a sandwich bot that is making me that much money, but if I had, I would at least ask for half a million dollars because it's not easy to create something that beats the competition that is making so much profit like you can just keep it and keep generating profit for years and years as long as your body is competitive and is optimized it will be great now the reason why I'm talk to I'm talking to you about this thing is because I've been asked how much money does it take to create a bot that is making that much profit right a guy wanted me to know you know to buy something from me not only one but multiple guys wanted me to sell them a sandwich bot that is making so much money. And then the reality is that it's difficult to create something like that and it's expensive. The best bots out there, they are making hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit. I believe the top one is making $400,000 a month in profit. You know how much money that would cost to create or buy? 400,000 in a year that is four million five million or so so you you will need to pay at least ten million dollars for something like that and most people are surprised when I say that because they think all right well it's just a bot it's just a problem that you create and you run it but no they don't see that the reality is you are competing with so many people you are competing with the entire world basically and you have to make programs that are super optimized, not only in speed because you want to execute all the transactions as fast as possible, but in gas optimizations. And this brings us to the second topic of this video, which is Ethereum virtual machine opcodes. This is something that you must know if you want to compete, if you want to create the best bots possible, the best MEV bots that are actually competitive in the market. You need to know about this opcodes what is this why is this so important and why should you learn it well the reason why you should learn it is because writing smart contracts that are super low level with a language such as half will allow you to make bots that consume much less gas much less than the competitors and this is great because that way you can beat your competition especially in things like sandwiching or arbitrage where the most profitable bot wins so how is this how does this work well the Ethereum virtual machine is just like a computer you can think of it as a server and you interact with it through opcodes through instructions you see this is an opcode stop another opcode at mold and what these instructions do is just it tells the program okay go here execute this add these numbers call this function that's all it's doing it's just small instructions that are meant to be very very small in terms of size 
they are executed in something called the call data which is a hexadecimal byte information that is sent to the Ethereum virtual machine to the validators and that is executed by, by them. So how does this work? Well, like I said, there are about 100 or so instructions, more than 100. And each instruction allows you to do something with the blockchain. For instance, stop is the, the first one. This one doesn't consume any gas. In fact, this tells you the EVM codes website, which is super useful, I recommend it. I've been using it many, many times. This tells you the, the minimum gas that it takes to execute this instruction. As you can see, every gas counts. And from here, you can tell how much gas you are spending on, on the execution of your functions. In Solidity, you cannot tell because they are running this information, they're running opcodes, but they are compiling that from your code. They're taking your code, your functions, your variables, and they're turning that into bytecodes that can be executed. And they are not usually optimized because they are meant to be easy to write and to execute, but not to that they're not very optimized. So stop, when you run this function, it your program stops, your smart contract execution is stopped. It doesn't take any gas, as you can see. Then there is mol, I mean add. What this does is it adds to numbers. So you summarize to numbers just like plus. It's a very simple instruction, but you may need it, you know, to add to numbers. It takes three gas. So if you have a for loop, that is executing 10 times and you're adding numbers 10 times, you'll spend 10, 30 gas. In fact, why I love this website is the reason why I love this website is because you can play this instruction in the playground. This is how it works. First, there is the stack here. And the stack is just a place where you store information, variables, let's just call it data temporarily and you play with that information, you move it, you add it, you subtract it, you, you execute it, you delete it, you add it. It's a very, very flexible place, the stack. Then there is the memory where you can store things there more permanently. It's not permanent, but you can store things more for a later retrieval. It's just, that's where you put your variables if you need them. And storage is where you put your permanent information on the blockchain. This is the most expensive place because if you add information to the storage, that information will be stored on the blockchain permanently. So how does this work? Well, we are pushing to the stack 10, then another 10, and we are adding those numbers. Let's play around and see how it works. First, you run it here, and you can see all the instructions, and you simply go through each one of them. First, we're adding the value 10. This is in hexadecimal. This is 10 because hexadecimal goes from 0 to 9 and then goes A, B, C, D, F. So it's 15 numbers represented in, with letters and numbers. Then we are adding another value to the stack and as you can see the stack is one value on top of the other. That's how it works. You cannot just access every random uh, you, you have to go one on top of the other. Then we execute the add opcode and what this gives us is 14. You can see that the two values that add 0 and I mean A and A have been consumed and you are left with 14 which is the sum of the numbers in hexadecimal. If you want to see the real value you just open the developer tools you go 0x 14 and you get 20. This is exactly how much you get from adding those two numbers. It may seem simple, it may seem very I mean useless but this is important because you need to understand these values they are in hexadecimal and you read them like this and the stack works by pushing values on top of the other and you utilize it like that then in this example what we are doing is we are adding this variable this is just a long number of bytes in hexadecimal and this is the largest number if you take that and you try to convert it into a readable number you get something huge 77 it's a very big number so what happens if we add this the largest number and we add one more to it what we get is that the result is zero because we over we did a, an overflow of the values and that means 
you go to the maximum value if you if you try to go more than that value the program what the virtual machine will do is will it will go back to zero to the lowest value it, there's no value above this number there's no such number so it goes back to zero and then you can go one two three and so on same thing if you are at zero and you try to go below it by subtracting one you cannot subtract one to zero there's no number down here so it goes back to the highest number which is this one it's a huge number that's how it works and this is the root cause of many issues in smart contracts overflows and underflows there are people that have stolen thousands and millions of dollars from those issues and this happens all the time in solidity in uh, assembly and in half so these are many instructions i am not going to go through all of them because there are so many there are hundreds of them but i'll leave you as an exercise to just go through this website and play around with the bytecodes read all of them the opcodes opcodes and uh, see how they work i don't use many of them is zero this is one that is used as an if statement as an if shr this one is used a lot also and it's it's gonna be difficult if you want to learn this you will spend a lot of time playing around with it until it clicks and then everything makes sense for me it did and i spent a while a few months i believe playing with this until it made sense and then once you know this you can go to half which is an alternative to solidity that allows you to write smart contracts and i was able to go through you know the tutorial and i wrote my own smart contracts in half what is half well like i said an alternative way to write smart contracts because at the end of the day a smart contract is just bytecode it's a bunch of instructions up codes glued together there are many hundreds of thousands of them in every smart contract and what half does is just allows you to write a very optimized smart contract but in order to deploy a half contract that's a whole different story a whole beast on its own to write half contracts well there are, there are information here but you will run into issues you will get stuck and eventually if you are persistent enough like i did you will learn it and it, everything will make sense and you will be able to write this super low level type of smart contracts that allow you to write extremely optimized code basically there is no code that is more optimized than the code that you're writing in half you are consuming the less gas possible which means you can beat the competition you can ultimately create mev bots that make you ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars a month by learn this stuff this is super dangerous if you if you know it you're a dangerous individual because you can create mev bots that are actually competing with what's out there and with that i will just summarize what we went through in this video and conclude so like i said at the beginning in order to create a sandwich bot that makes you ten thousand dollars twenty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars a month you have to have someone that is willing to buy or build or sell such a program first which is something very difficult i don't know many people that are selling these programs and if they are 99 percent of them are scammers so it's very very difficult to get your hands on one of these programs and they are very desired because you just you just set it and just let it run let it generate you money every month it's super passive it's one of the most passive types of incomes that are out there the mev type of space but of course it's not cheap you need to find someone that is capable i've been offered many times to create bots for other people and i've declined because they just didn't understand how mm, expensive this really is you need to be willing to pay up two two years up front either you pay it in development or you pay it for a program that is working for a bot that is generating money and most people are not willing to do that a few people may be may be interested in that but it's it's a difficult thing let me just say that 
And then we went through the opcodes, the virtual machine opcodes, which is something that you need to learn. It's an exercise that I will leave you here just so you can get familiar with the virtual machine. I will make more content on half on the Ethereum virtual machine and I, I will likely make a course on it, but it's not gonna be cheap. I'm letting you know that it's gonna be expensive only for a few people. Why? Because I don't want more competitors and this type of stuff is just an edge. This will give you an advantage that no other thing can give you. And I, I just don't want more competitors. I will make it very expensive and very limited if I make it because right now I'm very busy with contracts and with my own bots. I've been working on simulations. I don't want to do, you know, I, I don't want to rely on flash bots or block route or tenderly all of these simulator services they are limited you have to build your own simulator if you are r serious about creating bots and that's what i did i i wrote my mine in half i thought it would take me a, a week at most but it took me a, a, a bit longer because i got stuck on it and eventually i realized the error that i had but this is how it is in in the mev world you get stuck you persist and you eventually go through and you learn so much more than you expected anyway hope this has been helpful and make sure to subscribe to my email list and to my youtube channel which is down below the link is out there and uh, see you soon